We are live. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Homestead Hangout. Bow, bow, bow. Here with Tina and Joe. Bow, bow, bow. Bow. You're supposed to jump in there and like. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have you guys know that he's not always this quiet, are you, Joe? <laughs> no, we often joke and wonder if other married couples are as mature as we are because we're so immature. Hi, Valerie. Welcome to the live stream. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, everybody. We'll wait for some others to jump on before we get started. What is going on? So I talked Joe into hanging out with us again tonight. He says, this isn't fair. <laughs> he said, this is not who he is. He doesn't talk in front of people, but I am all about helping him grow. It's all about growing and becoming better, right? We can do this. I mean, when I first started the videos and I would look back at them, I remember being so nervous. I remember not being able to breathe when I started my YouTube channel <laughs> and I would be talking in a recipe and I would actually have to stop the video and take a deep breath because I would do like <clears throat> a whole paragraph on one I breath. Sh I what? Okay. Hey, Angela. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, Angie. Hey, girl. Angie was just emailing me today. I love that. <laughs> she says, hey, Joe. <laughs> That's why I cut you off. Oh, what, what, what's up, Angie? What about me? <laughs> Am I just chopped liver? She's probably like, we were talking in email. So that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> I talk to you guys all the time in the comments, but if you don't have my email to directly communicate with me, it is just blessedandbeautifulhomestead at gmail.com. So you guys are always welcome to chat with me there. I appreciate it. Sometimes it's nice to have like a, a private conversation that's not um, tagged up with other people's thoughts and comments. So feel free to message me there. I check my email daily. So yeah. <laughs> Angie said, my husband said, hi, Tina. <laughs> hi, Angie's husband. <laughs> that is so funny. Angie sent me some pictures of her beautiful family today. I got to see all her babies. Um, Angie, did you have five or six kids? I can't remember. I know it was, it, it was quite a, quite a few. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. And you had a older child as well, um, <clears throat> that you mentioned in your email. So you could probably relate, um, to one thing I was going to talk to you guys about tonight with my, my Lexi, uh, she's 19. So, Hey, Jason. Hi. Hi, Jason. <laughs> Hi, Tina and Joe. I'm so glad you're here, Jason. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm kind of glad you're here tonight. You're kind of like, I always keep the moderator wrench uh, on you. So um, after my video I, I put on this morning that went live, I wasn't too sure what kind of peeps I was going to have on here tonight. <laughs> I probably, I probably ticked some people off with that one, but um, it wasn't to tick people off. Uh, but it just need to be said anyway, Angie's got six, six and a half at home. Yeah. Are you guys done, Angie? Are you guys going to have more babies? Six and five at home. No, she says six and a half. <clears throat> it's so funny because me and Joe always joke, um, joke. Around. Well, I'm not joking when I say it. Okay. I'm not joking. I wish we could have more children doing well. Thanks. I have you covered on the weirdos. <laughs> thanks, Jason. Oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm like, what if Jason's not on here? Can I remember how to go in and moderate? Lexi's not here with me. Um, so I do appreciate that, my friend, more than you know. Trust me. Uh, but yeah, you know, we had Lexi when we were super young. I was 19 and Joe, you're like a couple years older than me. So um, and there's a 10 year age gap between Parker and Lexi. We were not going to have any more children. We just wanted one. And then, uh, when Lexi was about nine or 10, I started getting the itch and I'm like, I don't know if I'm done. I don't know if I'm done having babies. Um, and we, and I say we, cause me and Lexi tag teamed and we talked Joe into, uh, having another baby. <laughs> Lexi wanted a sibling, specifically a brother. And it's just funny how things work out. But um, now that I'm older, you know, Joe, uh, 
Joe has um, been fixed. So he cannot have any more children. Um, neuter, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> castrating, that what we call it on a homestead, um, can't have no more babies. And we made that decision. And it's just so funny in a matter of like five to eight years, how much for me, how much that's changed. And I think a big part of it is that I'm no longer working a full-time job. I'm home, I'm homeschooling Parker, and I'm just more seeing the value in raising kids and um, looking at it more like a blessing than a burden, which I think our culture looks at being a parent as a burden. And God says that's not what it's supposed to be. So Fowler Family Farm. Hey, y'all. Good evening. Hey, welcome to the live stream. Angie, six. Okay. Six and five at home. That's mm -hmm. right. Because she has an older mm -hmm. Um, oh, Joe says he's he's grunting over here. Oh, I'm right. I think I'm right. Trying to nurse a baby and type. I ain't hit menopause yet. So who knows? You go, girl. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm going to be on a live stream, you know, chasing kids around, gardening, cooking. She does it all. So anyway, um, I was going to just mention to you guys that. Um, <clears throat> so Lexi is no longer living at home. We had this uh, big switch as of, I think it was Tuesday this week. So we knew this was coming. Um, Lexi, you know, when I first joined the Coast Guard, we were stationed in Rio Vista, California, and Lexi went to elementary school there. So she had a, this group of like five or six friends that she grew up with, and they've stayed in touch over social media all these years. And in July, she went to California to visit all those girlfriends. And y'all, she came back and was like, oh, I'm moving to California. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. And Joe's like, what? You know, she's like, I'm moving to California and I'm going to move September 1st. And we were just kind of taken back, um, probably more so for me than Joe. He's kind of go with the flow and I'm more, I'm the mama. So Anyway, um, she hit the road, you guys. She drove across country by herself in her new little car that she bought. And um, so when I mean to tell you I am on adrenaline and I have barely slept the last three or four days, I've barely slept the last three or four days. I might have sipped a little cough syrup at three in the morning a few times. I can neither confirm nor deny whatever it takes. Right. I just couldn't sleep. All I'm thinking is, oh my gosh, there's human traffickers and she's so beautiful. I don't even think she realizes how beautiful she is. She's driving by herself with Virginia plates. Um, people are going to assume she's traveling. She's traveling alone. She's probably got money. And so I, my stress, my nerves have just been like through the roof, but I'm glad to say she is in California and she has about at this point, probably four to four and a half hours to her destination. So I might be able to sleep a little bit better tonight. Ashley, what's up, girl? How are you? Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit tonight. I appreciate it. I know we're all super busy, so I look forward to the live streams. They come up so fast. Like every time we get done with one, it's time to do the next one. I'm like, oh my gosh, has it already been a month? It's crazy. Uh, yes, Ashley, uh, Lexi, my daughter. Wait, what are we talking about? Lexi moved to California. She's she's gone. Um, so she works at the Target warehouse here in Virginia, and they were able to transfer her into another position, supposedly there in California at that warehouse. So that's good. She's got a job waiting for her. She is moving in with her best friend's family. Her best friend still lives at home. And uh, so good family. We, we knew them well when we lived in California. So I'm grateful that she has that security and she does have that job to go into. Um, but this is all too much, you guys, like for the parents out there, this is like all too much for me right now. I don't even really know what to think of it yet. Um, it just happens so fast. I don't know. It, it literally is like a blink of an eye. It's you hear that all the time. Like, Oh, one day they're babies and the next day they're grown. It's just, it really happens like that. I'm like, how are we, I looked at Joe the other day and I'm like, do you realize what chapter in our life that we're at? Like we have a baby that just flew the nest. Like, how is that possible? I still feel young. I'm like, Lexi, please, please, please don't get pregnant. What? I'm sorry. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So we're here mumbling. I still look young though, don't I, Joe? <laughs> You're on plan. I'm playing. That's good. She will be safe then. Yeah, she'll be safe. And she's about four hours or so from her destination right now. So I, sh 
she flew y'all. I mean, I know she flew because I saw some of her Instagram stories. Yes. I was stalking her. Um, and she got there. I don't know. She left Tuesday, right, Joe? Yeah. Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday at like three o'clock in the afternoon, she left and it is Friday. So she got there in three days. She'll be there in a few hours. So, um, it's weird. I already miss her. She's my daughter, but as she grew into a young woman, she also became my friend and it was extremely hard walking into her empty room, uh, the night that actually I didn't go in there the night she left. I couldn't cause I would have just been snotting all over the place. So I waited and went in there the next day and it was just empty, but I could still smell her, her perfume. Valerie, I get it. <clears throat> when my son joined the military, I was like, wait a sec. Wasn't I just changing your diaper? Yes, I know, Valerie. Oh, my gosh. How does it happen? And, you know, I tell Lexi, she acts so grown, but she still comes and lays her head on my lap and wants me to tickle her back and play with her hair. Like, they're always going to be our babies, right? Thank you, Jason. Yeah, you guys, if you can, can you hit that like button for me? That'll help uh, this to get, you know, sent out on the YouTube world and help the algorithm there. So like that video for me, this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So anyway, so we'll see how that goes. I'm proud of her. It's just such a, I think Parker took it really, really bad. He like bawled his eyes. It was almost as if I hate to say this, but it was almost as if she had died. He like, and I guess in a sense that makes sense, right? Like you're grieving the loss of someone. Like this person has been in my home, in my life, in my care for 19 and a half years. And now she's just gone. And it is in a sense, grieving the loss of her. Um, and that's really hard. Parker just bawled his eyes out. He kept saying in tears, mama, just keep having flashbacks of sissy when she would take me on scooter rides and she would this and she would that. And I just tried to reassure him, you guys, and remind him like, those are memories and God gives us those so that we never forget. But he took it, he took it really hard. I gave him Lexi's little bunny that she carried around her whole like toddler life. And it's ripped up. The butt's been sewn up a million times and the stuffing fell out. He has no eyeballs. <laughs> and I gave the bunny to Parker to sleep with and it just, he lost it. And I'm like, oh, okay, you're putting the bunny back in the closet. <laughs> I thought it was going to soothe him, but it didn't. So uh, I thought they hated each other, but who knows? I guess they love each other. <laughs> yeah. Fowler family farm. Yes, it is really hard. It is really hard. And here Parker is <clears throat> the only child you know, like completely. She's not even like where we can drive to see her. Like she gone. She's on like the other side of the country. <laughs> um, so it's going to be an adjustment, I think for everybody. But as I've kind of mentioned to you guys in a few of the live streams, <clears throat> you guys forgive me. I think I have like a post nasal drip going on because the change of the season and allergies. So I'm sorry. I keep clearing my throat. <laughs> they really hate each other. I thought they hate each other. Yes. I'm telling you, right. They want nothing to do with each other. It's like she wanted a brother so bad. And then we had him and it was like, mom, get him out of my room. You know, our oldest son at Langley and he was, and he was, a was a baby. Is he at Langley now? Isn't Langley close to us, Joe? Mm -hmm. It's like right over the water, isn't it? Uh, Angie, what you what what you saying, girl? You just said COVID. Don't get me started, Angie. You know you can't do that, girl. You get me going on this like rabbit trail. <laughs> oh, your baby. Yes, I got you. I got you. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how things go. I. You know, you pray that you've done enough. You never know if you've done enough. I mean, you truly, especially with your first one, it's you truly have no clue. Um, she said you got COVID. She said I got COVID. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I know. You can't go anywhere and sneeze or cough or clear your throat without people like Ugh, looking at you like you're germ infested. Um, Yes, Langley is Virginia. So he was my baby. We had him at 19. All right. We did too. We had Lexi when we were 19 and we had just joined the army. So I was saying today on my podcast, um, I think on my podcast, you know, we 
we were babies when we had our first baby. I mean, I remember that first night in the hospital when we had her, she somehow itched her eye with her little mitt on and turned her eyelid <laughs> inside out. Yeah, I freaked out. I was like, what is wrong with my baby? And I didn't know how to flip it back. I didn't want to touch her. I was so petrified. I was 19. And the nurse came in with a little Q-tip and just popped it. And it was like, bloop, and it flipped right back uh, the right way. So that was interesting. But, you know, you learn everything with the first, right? Lexi fell off the bed. She walked off a porch that didn't have stairs. Um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because Parker does the same thing. Like, he's just prone for head injuries. So maybe it's just my kids. I don't know. I he's worse. I think he is worse. Yeah. Yeah. He, I would be afraid of them taking, like, an x-ray of his skull. They would probably take him from me because he has like multiple just I mean he had a trailer ramp fall on his head when he was what three and a half years old I think um I was at work I was still working full time and Joe was at home with Parker just saying it wasn't oh, under so my Joe's fault yeah, I mean I'm just it just wasn't under my watch I'm just saying I'm just, just putting that out there <laughs> just saying so Joe said Parker asked him what would happen if he pulled the pin out of the trailer ramp and Joe told him it'll fall. Don't touch it, buddy. You know? And Joe said like 10 minutes later, he just heard this crash and here's Parker. I mean, this, this is a, what was it? 18 foot trailer, Joe. I mean, it was a big trailer, you guys. And the ramp was heavy and he said Parker was just under it. And so his head was squished in the concrete between the trailer ramp. <laughs> and I got the call from Joe and, you know, Joe doesn't talk much. So when he called me, I could hear the sound in his voice that that there was an emergency. And all I heard was trailer, Parker's head, emergency room. And I just left work and flew down there. He had to get staples in his head. Oh, my goodness. Always dad's fault. That's right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just about had heart failure. I mean, he had like road rage or road rage. You're the wrong. You're the <laughs> one with road rage. <laughs> he had road rash all over the side of his face and just two huge gouges that had to be stapled shut. And, you know, Joe teases him and he's like, buddy, you just tell the girls you got bit by a shark. <laughs> so just accept it, Joe. It's your fault, Valerie says. It always is. Yeah, he's probably used to that. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Um, seriously, though, you guys, I do want to just while I have you guys here right now, because a lot of you on here right now are um, the people that are always there. And I do just want to say thanks for all of your comments and your encouragement. It It's just as I said in my video this morning, like as much as I try to like encourage and make other people know that they're not alone and the things that they're feeling, you guys make me feel that I'm not alone. Um, seriously, like Angie, when you emailed me today, pictures of your family, that meant a lot to me. Somebody, somebody left a really nasty comment this morning and it was so long that I can't even remember all of it, but in a nutshell said, you know, this is YouTube. This isn't your friend bubble, like get over it if people don't like you. And I'm like, but this is my friend bubble. This is my little space on the internet. And this, you guys here tonight, you guys are my friends. So um, thank you for all of the support and encouragement. Um, I think we're all going through this together. So it's, it's really important. And a lot of us as homesteaders, um, we're kind of pushed out and in rural areas where we don't have a lot of immediate friends or family, um, especially if you guys are military like we are, right? Shark bait, ooh ha ha. <laughs> Angie, that rant was great this morning. And it was a rant, girl. I watched it back before I uploaded it and I'm like, should I, should I? <laughs> I always doubt, you know, should I? And I'm like, well, here goes nothing. It is what it is. These are my thoughts and it's going to be what it's going to be. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, forget the haters. And, you know, it's one reason I wanted to really put that out there. I have kind of gone against my own rule a little bit, and I've, I've started to respond to some of these comments, and that's my flesh. Um, we all have that, right? That fleshly desire to defend ourselves, to respond. And in reality, does it matter what I say to these people? It's not going to change their mind about me. Um, so I had to kind of check myself and I had to check my anxiety level that was kind of caused by me 
even entertaining some of this stuff. So I straight up went in today and deleted, delete, block, delete, block, delete, block. I don't care. I, like I said, if I end up with 10 subscribers at the end of the day that are true God-fearing people that are like-minded, then so be it. I don't want to deal with negative people here. No problem, girl. I've always been a silent observer. Oh my gosh. I See, I didn't know that. Um, Love Truth Gardening Homeopath says this. Uh, she said, I've always been a silent observer. I feel like God has given me a voice. I cannot stand down. That's right. You can't. And it's scary. It, it is scary, you guys. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> Jason, I wish trolls could be automatically removed. I know. I know. And what's kind of creepy on a platform like this, you don't ever know who's really watching you, you know? And what I don't get is people that don't like me, don't like what I stand for, are here watching my content, watching my family. And that's creepy to me. I'm like, why? Why are you here? Thanks, Valerie. <laughs> Ashley, I'm almost there as homesteader getting there. Yes, you are, Ashley. Uh, Ashley is um, my friend. I told you guys we're kind of sharing pictures constantly about our prepping project. Her and I are um, going crazy, just kind of preparing our families for anything crazy. I mean, it doesn't even have to be this crazy uh, mandate crap that's going on and possibly not being able to go to the grocery store unless you have a passport. Um, but look at what just happened in Louisiana. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Look at all the people that are out of power right now. I mean, that's very possible um, where I'm at, where any of us are really to have a natural disaster like that. So just being prepared food wise, I don't really think we've ever done what we're doing now. We haven't. We've never, not on this scale. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we're doing is every payday, we're putting, putting down a couple hundred bucks, whatever we can afford and just adding to the stash. Um, and we still have a lot of work to do. We were vacuum sealing everything, putting oxygen absorbent packets in there, mylar bags, five gallon buckets, just protecting that food. But if craziness happens, then at least, I mean, is it going to last us like six years? No. But I mean, if we're out of food for a month because of a natural disaster or something else, I mean, we've got food right now to last us for a long time. So you got to start somewhere, you know? Angie says, why do haters give lengthy feedback? You asked, why are you still here? Seriously, they can leave quietly. Don't go away mad. Just go away. Yeah, I know, Angie. Some of these comments I get are like books. Like, you hate me, <laughs> but you've spent, you've got to spend like an hour on that comment. I mean, why do you put that kind of energy into someone that you don't even like? It's just crazy to me. Yes? Um, it'll, it'll knock the light over. What do you need? Uh, yeah. It's Parker. God will bring the ones that need to hear you. And Satan is always there to accuse. That is right. He sure is. He is working on some stuff right now. Any of you guys have been extra bold lately online, not holding back. I want everyone to know that we need to know Christ and be careful with the decisions we make right now. Yes, that's true, Ashley. And someone told me today, I can't remember which one of you left this comment for me. Um, actually, I don't think he, I think it's a man. I don't think he's here tonight, but it, it was a kind comment. He basically said, you know, I agree with you a hundred percent, but he said, do it in love. And that's, that's true. I mean, like I said in the video, people are like, you know, God is love. We're supposed to love our neighbor. Yeah. Um, so there's a way to honor and respect other people's decisions and do it in a loving way, but still not uh, compromise your own convictions and principles. That's that's not love. I mean, that's the whole thing we've got going on with the transgender movement, right? And them sharing bathrooms with our kids and stuff. You know, it's like, so this small percentage of America that's clearly mentally got some issues and legitimately needs some help um, is having an effect on the majority of the population. And so then what happens to our rights? It's all about making them comfortable, not discriminating against them, making them feel equal. But then in that process, our rights are being trampled on. So that's kind of where it doesn't really work. 
With rice, make sure to freeze or cook in the oven for a little bit at low temp to kill weevils and their eggs. Then add bay leaves when you do the long-term storage. Gabriel is here with me. Can Parker say hi to him? Oh, Ashley Parker just walked out the door. He might be back though. So if he comes back, I'll call him in here. He's got a little friend down the street. Um, she's super sweet. She's like 11, but she's a tomboy. And her parents are really raising her well, at least from what we can see, the way she carries herself, the way she dresses. They play Nerf guns, Legos, and all that good stuff. So he just went to see if she was home to play with her. But if not, I'll call him back in here for sure. So, so yeah, you guys, we close on the Alaska cabin um, on Tuesday or Wednesday. Whatever day is the 7th of September, we close on the cabin. So we had a little hiccup with the well on the property. So the property was advertised to have septic and well and all was good. Well, when it came down to the well inspection, um, it turns out that the well is not well. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So there was issues. It was like sucking air. I don't know. Joe knows all the technical terms, but... Um, runs out of water. Runs out of water. So I think it's it was only, what, 40 or 50 feet deep. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's, that's not sufficient for a family. Um, so long story short, we went back and forth with the seller. Uh, he has sold multiple properties in Alaska and had to make some major repairs on those properties before they could close on them. And so they kind of presented to us that he's got like seller fatigue and, and I'm like, I'm sorry, that really sucks, but I need to have water for my family. Like I'm all about homesteading, but I'm not going to go to a Creek and carry buckets of water to cook and to bathe in. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, long story short, he agreed to pay for a new well. Um, and in order to close and just get it done and get it in our name and know that we've got it and it's ours, um, we, he took the money off the sales price. So I'm really excited about that. Never understood people watching stuff they don't like either. We've been trying to stock up as well. We're doing pretty good. Stand strong. Thank you. Um, AK slam fire. AK, are you in Alaska or does that stand for something else? Okay. Jealous of y'all moving to Alaska. So that must mean you're not there. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, it's like, we have exactly one year, one year, you guys. And, um, maybe. yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe with Joe's retirement, we'll see. Um, but just knowing that we've got the property there and it's, it's waiting for us gives me some, some peace of mind. Far North life. Hello from a Hello. <laughs> Yay. We have some uh, Alaska friends since I posted the cabin video. We've got some friends that are currently in Alaska homesteading. So that's really cool that we already have a community up there of people that we can plug into when we get there. That's awesome. So yeah. Um, so the cabin basically is going to be vacant for a year. The plan was to fly out next summer, <clears throat> early next summer, because we have to do some work on it. We need to do, um, we need to winterize it, insulate the pipes under the cabin, put up skirting and some things like that. But with the craziness in the world, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that because I don't think it's going to be long before we hear that you can't fly unless you have a vaccine passport. Uh, so we'll see, which I'm not going to be flying then. So we may not be able to get up prior to us moving out there next fall uh, to do those things. But we've got a good realtor up there that only lives 30 minutes from the cabin and he is going to kind of look after it for us. So that gives me some peace of mind. <laughs> they said, I just got recommended your cabin video. That's awesome. That's cool. Excited for y'all. Thank you. Leaving LA, heading to Washington. Valerie. Okay. So do you guys live in LA now and you're going to be moving to Washington? Washington's a beautiful state. Um, we were stationed there when we first joined the army, we were stationed at Fort Lewis. That's where Lexi was born at the, um, Madigan, mm -hmm. I think Madigan army hospital. So we were up in Washington for probably three years or so. 
Okay. She says, so the Alaska family says we are off grid with two kiddos here in Alaska, also starting our homestead from complete scratch. That is, that is cool. Yeah. Um, Valerie says, yes. Okay. Gotcha. So you're moving up there. Um, it's so funny. Everybody that we tell we're moving to Alaska, kind of our plan and about the property and stuff. Their first thing is like, well, what are you going to do when you get there? <laughs> Joe's like nothing. <laughs> he's, you know, he's going to be retired. Um, and if he can make it to retirement, we will have his retirement pension and we won't have to work. Um, we've kind of set ourselves up that way that, you know, we're not going to have debt and the bills that would require us to have a job. So, um, yeah, but I'm like, the only structure on that property is the cabin itself right now. So you guys, this is going to be our forever homestead. We got a lot of work to do. Like we're not going to be bored. That's for sure. I've got to build a new greenhouse, a big one. <laughs> I need a big greenhouse because we have a shorter growing season there. Uh, we need a woodshed because the house is heated solely with the wood burning stove. We need a chicken coop. Um, what else? We need a guest cabin because our grand, my grandpa is coming with us. My 88 year old grandpa, a sawmill shack, a sawmill shack. What else? I mean, there's just tons of stuff. And I mean, we're going to be hunting. We're going to go salmon fishing. So we're not going to be bored. So when people ask me what we're going to do, it's like, I don't know, maybe they think we're moving to like, you know, life below zero type stuff where you can, you can't go outside, uh, because of the temperatures. I don't know. Walla Walla in Washington. I've heard of that. Where is that? I don't remember. I've definitely heard of that, Valerie. I can't remember where it's at. Funny that we were talking about moving. We were looking at land right now. Found some land with water on a small creek type river. 400 feet of it. So we will see. Ashley, that's cool. So down still in Florida or are you guys looking somewhere else? You know, we always wanted um, a property with water. So this property in Alaska, while it doesn't have like a river or stream running through it, it does have that big pond, which we want to stock with fish. I think that'll be cool. But you guys, literally, when you leave that property, there is nothing but Alaskan wilderness in one direction from the property, um, just filled with rivers and streams and creeks. So Okay. Um, Alaska hunting, fishing, etc. Exploring. That's right. Yeah. Exploring. There's so much to explore up there. I cannot wait. Valerie says, what are you going to do? LOL. Whatever the heck we want. That's right. Maybe nothing. Maybe I'll just sip my cup of coffee in front of the wood burning stove. I don't know. That's the point, right? Ashley says you definitely need a greenhouse. Yeah. We're going to do a big one. We're going to have to clear a spot for it. Uh, for sure. Um, but we're definitely going to do a big greenhouse. We've been kicking around what we want to do. Do we want to do an actual greenhouse like we've done twice or a hoop house or um, like a big high tunnel? I don't know. I, I do feel that the actual greenhouse, the wood built greenhouse with treated wood and the um, plastic roofing panels is very durable. So even though that's going to be a little bit more expensive, obviously, than like a hoop house build, I think that if we bite the bullet up front and do it right the first time, I think that we're really going to be able to use that for a long time. So we'll see. What do you think, Joe? More permanent. Yeah, more permanent. <clears throat> we have been dreaming of moving to Alaska for nine years, hopefully soon, Lord willing. Have you guys ever been there? Um, and I think that's the other thing. People are like, Alaska, oh my gosh, it's so cold there. And it's like, maybe if I had never been there, I would be more fearful of it. But we were stationed there twice, once in Fairbanks, once um, more Southern in Ketchikan. Uh, so we know what to expect and we're okay with that. And look, that kind of uh, weather, Jason, thank you. Thank you for that super chat. <laughs> You're so sweet. I appreciate that. That is really cool. I always appreciate the super chats, you guys. Um, 
you know, when YouTube uh, prompted me to uh, turn that feature on, I was like, what is that? So um, it's just a way for our followers to support our family um, with a super chat. That is pretty cool. So thanks, Jason. You my homie. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I got a little behind here. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Ashley says, we're about to start building more buildings on the property right now. Just bought the metal to do tall fencing and new coop. That's awesome, Ashley. She's been talking about getting meat birds and kind of doing the whole homesteading thing. So you guys are on the right track. It's definitely, uh, it's an undertaking when you're starting from scratch, but it's going to be so worth it, especially given the light that the of the world that we're living in. Uh, just having that sense of security, knowing that you can kind of provide for yourself and your family is, um, is priceless. Greenhouse is a must up here. Hard to grow certain veggies. I'm going to have to hook up with you guys. Can you email me? <laughs> I want to have like a direct line of communication with you, my Alaska friend. Um, Valerie, southeast corner. Okay. My homeschooling is kicking in. Northeast, south. Okay. So we were southeast. I know, Joe. I had to think of the compass rose in my brain. So we were. Where were we be at? Where was southeast it? Alaska? We were. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking Washington. I was thinking of. Oh, um, is she talking about Washington? I think so. Yes, oh. that's Valerie. Uh huh. She's the one moving from LA up to Washington. See, Joe. I know what I was. I thought you were talking about Alaska. No. Me. Where were we at in Washington, Tacoma? Where's that at? Central? Yes. Ish. Warm up north ish. Yeah, it, it is so pretty there. We used to go hiking a lot when we lived in Washington. It's before we had Lexi. You know, she came in Washington, but later. <clears throat> Florida, because our governor is too good to leave. Oh, girl, you can say that again. <laughs> Ashley, you can say that again. Governor DeSantis is the bomb. I, I look at that man and I am so, no, no, <laughs> we're not going to talk like that. That's inappropriate, Joe. Um, he's so bad. I have to tell him constantly, like, <laughs> I'm saying Governor DeSantis, like I hear him speaking and saying the things that he says, like he is just unapologetic and he does not care. Like when he told Biden um, until he secures the borders, don't, don't say a flip. What do you say? A flip to him about COVID? I mean, he's just on point with that. I mean, it's common sense. It's a common sense governor. And uh, our elections are coming up pretty soon, you guys. So, I, you know, right now we have a Democratic governor, uh, Governor Northam. And he's actually been pretty quiet lately, except he had some really rude things to say about the uh, abortion law that just got passed in Texas. And it's just disheartening these people um, that support murdering babies. I don't get it. That's a whole nother video and not on YouTube. Cause I'll probably get deleted for it. <laughs> I totally recommend simple living Alaska for gardening. Yes. I follow them. Eric and Ariel. Yep. Their garden is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, can I just say that it is ridiculous. It's gorgeous. I mean, part of me is like, how do y'all need to have some babies? Cause how are you guys eating all that food? Like get you a little troop going on. I don't know how they eat all that food. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so I'm excited um, to get up there and see. You know what, you guys, down here in Virginia, a lot of my stuff died in August, uh, July and August. It was so hot and humid that it was like the plants were just like, we can't take it. It's just not worth it. And they just died. So, yeah, I mean, any extreme on one end of the spectrum or the other could, is not going to be good for the garden unless you've got the right growing space for it like a greenhouse or whatever. Angie says my ex was in the Navy, had his discharge papers waiting for sure. And he couldn't avoid the anthrax big V mandate. He was just waiting to arrive at shore and they still forced the jab. Wow. Well, and I'm hearing from a lot of our friends here on YouTube on the channel, um, their loved ones right now, um, the last six months or so, maybe longer during the pandemic, haven't been able to come home from overseas unless they got the, the V. And I'm like, how is that, how is that possible when you cannot mandate, um, something that is not yet approved by the FDA? 
Um, so I don't know how that works. And and they've got them where they want them, right? I mean, these guys want to come home. You guys in the military, I never got deployed like that, but I can tell you just being gone in boot camp and stuff, it was like, you want to go home. You, you, you put that on your calendar and you count down the days. Um, so for someone to come to you after you've been deployed in another country for however long they were there and say, you can't go home to your family unless you get this shot. That's a tough place to be. And it's not fair. Ashley says, I just bought a whole bunch of end cuts at the metal shop. 5V, 10 foot, two foot panels, $8 each. Ashley, you all, you, you always talk so smart to me. Even when we're on the phone, you are so technically intelligent. And Joe's probably looking at this comment like, that's not anything crazy, Tina. Well, in my world, it is because I deal with vinegar and salt and pickles. So um, is this a new one? No, I don't know. Jason, is that a new um, super chat? You said you've got the next round. It just popped up like a new one. So if that is new, um, thank you. What are you sipping tonight, my friend? <laughs> As you guys know, I've got my red wine here. Um, Joe, what are you sipping tonight? Vodka. Just straight vodka. This guy is a beast over here. It's water. <laughs> Joe does not drink any alcoholic beverages. Um, he he does not like the taste of alcohol. Weirdo. <laughs> um, just kidding. Uh, he's my rock and I'm grateful because there have been many a times in our marriage where he had to throw me over his shoulder and fireman carry me home. Those were back in the olden days and I'm not like that anymore. Um, but there were many times, right, Joe? Was it last month? No, that's a lie. <laughs> he's lying. I'll tell you what, my days of hugging the toilet bowl are over. I had my time as a, uh, what, young twenties, early in the military, no, I, I don't need to do that. You guys, I don't do well with hangovers. I'm stuck in bed for two days. Um, literally, I'm not even joking. I'm down for the count. Like it just doesn't work for my body. Ashley, using it for fencing and roofings and building walls. Okay. All kinds of material. That's good. Did that cost you an arm and a leg, Ashley? Gosh, the cost of materials is ridiculous right now. Yes, we went in 2017 and loved it. Okay, so you guys have been to Alaska. That's awesome. Isn't it beautiful? I want to do the um, the train ride. I don't know what it's called, but the Alaska Railroad something rather. <laughs> Help me out, Joe. <laughs> but I've heard that it's really beautiful, and I've never been on a train, so I think that would be really cool. Not sure what the 10 next round is. Okay, Ashley. So, um, Bama Outdoors, his, his name is Jason and the name of his YouTube channel is Bama Outdoors and he raises bees and such. And I think rabbits too, right, Jason? Um, it is a super chat. So if you look down in the bottom of the comment section on my end of the screen, it looks like a money sign and it says, show your support for blessed and beautiful homestead. So you can send, it's called a super chat and it's basically just to support our family and our channel. Um, and so Jason gave us $10 and that comes to us through my, um, YouTube revenue. And it just, you know, it's just another way for us to connect with followers and for them to support us. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Far north. Let's see. That's why I like it up here. Guns and freedom. Yes. Holla. Guns and freedom. And the other thing too, and I know this probably sounds crazy. I just feel like, I don't want to say I, I feel like I'd be safer there because, um, you know, you can't spend your life running from place to place because there's going to be issues anywhere you go. But I think that there's something to be said for going to a place, if it matters that much to you, or if that's something that's important to you, going to a place that is um, historically, statistically uh, in line with your values. And, you know, with our governor here in Virginia being a Democrat, 
um, and a lot of the leaders, that's not in alignment with our values because of the things they support. So I just feel like Alaska, people have this vision of what Alaska is. And I feel like some of the crazies aren't going to want to go there because <laughs> they think it's like igloos and polar bears. Um, so I don't know. I guess I just feel like I'm going to get as far away as I possibly can with still staying in the United States. That's what we thought when we first went there. What? That it was polar bears and igloos? Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> I was like, Alaska. We were in the army and Joe got orders to Fort Wainwright. And um, you guys, I, I went shopping because I'm like, we're going to Alaska. I like bought all this, like, it was ridiculous. I had no clue what Alaska was like. And I stepped off the plane with Lexi. Um, I think that's December. It was December. So it was super cold up in Fairbanks. And I think that was the plane ride that she peed on my lap. <laughs> she was like 18 months old. And, you know, I think they're allowed to sit in your lap up to two years old. And I, we took off from the runway and I just felt warmth go through my jeans. And I was like, and I looked down and <laughs> she just peed all over me. Oh, so, but we got off the plane and I remember taking a breath and we got off on the tarmac. It was a smaller plane and I coughed immediately and I felt my nose hairs cracking. Like they were freezing. That's how cold it was. We had to put little shoes on the dog, um, battery heaters for your car. I mean, it was cold up there. Valerie loves Simple Living Alaska. I know, right? Their garden is awesome. We watch Eric and Ariel too. My garden didn't do that well this year either in eastern Indiana. Peppers have done great though, but nothing else has done as well as they have the last three years I've been gardening. Bummer. That's, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like every season, it's something different. We've had crops that have done really well. And then the next year they just totally bomb. And I don't know why. Um, my Brussels sprouts have never given me Brussels. They're just like these big plants with no Brussels. So, and I'm like, I see these pictures of these people with these long stems with like hundreds of Brussels on there. And I'm like, I want Brussels. <laughs> and I've never gotten them. They don't even form into a little head. They just flower out and not flower, but they break out into these huge leaves and they never form. So uh, yeah. And then this year our carrots were overrun with tomato worms. I'm sorry, tomato caterpillars. I had someone correct me um, and tell me that they're not worms. So <laughs> yeah, but Parker and I went out just to check on the garden that morning. And it's funny because we got a mason jar and I should have posted on Instagram. It was crazy how many of these caterpillars that we caught. And I think that we caught them right at the right time. And I just take the scissors and I cut them bad boys in half. The chickens won't even eat them. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if the guts are sour or what, but the chickens smell around and look at them like, why don't you try it? I ain't eating that. So they won't eat those tomato caterpillars. My chickens won't. So I just chop them up and then I squish them and put them in a hole and bury them. I'm just kidding, but I just, ugh, I hate tomato caterpillars. So we took them all off the carrots. Um, they started trying to get on the, the celery and I caught them ahead of time, but it's like, you have to be diligent and get out there and look at your plants. And I think that's where a lot of people make a mistake in their garden is they're like, everything's growing. It's good. I can just water it and leave it until it's time to harvest. But you really have to be out there inspecting the plants and the leaves for disease and bugs. And a lot of times you can catch the, the caterpillars and the pests and get rid of them before they eat the whole crop. I had a teeny little garden outside this year. Didn't even have to water it. I call it lazy gardening. Yes. Well, yeah, because you probably, I'm not sure what part of Alaska you're in, but um, I know like when we were in Ketchikan, it was a tempered rainforest and we got what, what is it? 200 and something days of the year is rain. Um, so it was, it was just very rainy. So yeah. And we get a lot of rain here in Virginia too. And so the outside garden, a lot of times we don't have to water it. Like we do the greenhouse and the hoop house. And that is nice, isn't it? It's very convenient. Bye, Ashley. She says she's going for a golf cart ride. Okay, girl, go get you some golf cart. Thanks for coming on. Tell Noah I said hello. Thanks for your service. Oh, you're welcome. It was our pleasure. Proud to serve. Right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Proud to serve. 
man, you guys, I was actually like really emotional last week with, and still am about the um, service members that were killed over in Afghanistan. So unnecessary, didn't have to happen. I'm just really sad about it. So there's been a lot of that uh, over 20 years and these ones shouldn't have happened. So very grateful for that sacrifice. I'm grateful that, you know, my brothers, we've, we've all been in the service except for my sister. Uh, me and my younger brother were army. My other brother is Navy. And of course, um, Joe and I have been army and coast guard. So just stay away from Anchorage and you'll love it here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anchorage is just like city life. I was like, what? Yeah. And that's what I was trying to tell Lexi. I was trying to convince Lexi to come to Alaska with us. And she's like, uh, -uh there ain't no malls. There ain't. And I'm like, Lexi, you can, we're like an hour or so, right? An hour and a half, like an hour and a half, I think from Anchorage at the new property. Um, and I was telling her like you, it's not, it's not igloos and polar bears. I mean, she should know this. Um, but then again, um, <clears throat> excuse me. She, when we were in Fairbanks, Alaska, she was too young to really remember it. So what she remembers of Alaska is Ketchikan, Alaska, when we were there with the Coast Guard and Ketchikan's an island. So it's very small. There's one highway, Tongass Highway. I mean, you can get from one end of the island to the next in 30 minutes. Everything is shipped in on a barge. There's no mall. Um, you know, it's very small. So that's what Lexi remembers of Alaska. But I was trying to tell her, I'm like, Anchorage has everything. Um, even Wasilla. Uh, is large. It's got the Walmart and Lowe's and all the doctors. Anything you could possibly need is within driving distance. A little wine is good for the stomach's sake. Applied Knowledge says, thank you. See, Joe? I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you do say stuff sometimes. I mean, <laughs> you know, I have a, I'm not, I was going to say I'm not a wine snob, but I think I'm turning into one. I have always loved red wine, um, but you guys, I've mentioned before that I get my wine now from dry farm wines and it's organically produced and um, no man-made yeast is added to it. The yeast uh, for the fermenting is straight from the skins of the grape, um, very low alcohol content. I think each bottle is like 12 to 12 and a half percent. Um, low sugar. So it's really good. Like if you're on a keto diet or something like that, I really love dry farm farm wines, but it's a monthly subscription. And sometimes I'll run out of my subscription and I'll be a little cranky. <laughs> and then when it comes in, I'll be happy. And Joe's like, Oh, now I see why you've been in a good mood. <laughs> Angela, worms are, tomato worms are toxic. She said worms and calves. Angie, I love you. She's so funny. She said that um, we need to go see the Creation Museum. Kentucky, right, Angie? Isn't the Ark, the Ark Encounter? Oh, that one. Uh-huh. Um, she said she's like, I don't know. She's she's close uh, in distance to that. So she said if we ever go there, we should hit her up because they have like free passes. So she's like, we can meet you guys. So I would really like that. I told her with all the mandates, we probably, well, and um, we can't go. <laughs> We're dirty, germaphobic, unvaccinated people. So we <laughs> can't go outside of 200 miles from Joe's duty station. How's that for freedom? <laughs> so they just passed that down a couple weeks ago. I shared it in a post on my wall. We had to cancel our trip to Arizona to see Joe's family. Um, plane tickets were bought, car rental, everything set up, and we had to cancel the whole trip. So I'm still trying to get the money back. I bought insurance on the plane tickets, and then like I still haven't heard back on the claims, so I don't really know what's going to happen with that. They're trying to say that they're going to give us a credit um, instead of reimbursing us, which I didn't know that's how they handle that. If I knew that I wouldn't even have bought insurance on the tickets because you have to use those credits within a year. Well, who knows what the next year is going to hold you guys. If we have to have a passport, a V passport to fly, we're not flying. I'm just going to freaking buy a horse. <laughs> you know, we'll just ride a cowboy. Yeah. Okay. So that's, <laughs> what I'm talking about, Joe. <laughs> oh. 
the one thing you say, <laughs> you say something like that. <laughs> Slugs are an issue here. Oh yeah. We used to have them in Ketchikan, Alaska too. Um, it's so sad. We used to torture them because you know, if you put salt on them, they like disintegrate and melt and die. It's really uh, barbaric, but you I know, I, yes, I wasn't the only one that murdered slugs. I think you're the one that taught me how to do it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Slugs were an issue for us up there in Ketchikan too. Um, yeah. Valerie, are you saying what to us having to cancel our Arizona trip? Sorry, I lost track. I'm not sure exactly what that was in response to. Yeah, we're, we are American citizens and we can't even travel to another state in our country because we're unvaccinated. Um, yeah, we've been there. Have you been following what's okay. been happening in Australia? Yes, and I am sickened by it. Um, today they announced this new facial recognition app and I forget exactly what it is. It's about quarantining or something. And the Australian government can ping your app. Um, and if you don't respond within 15 minutes, they send the police to your location. Crazy. They've got a curfew. You can't go outside your house after nine o'clock because of COVID. I mean, it's absolute insanity um, for something that has such a high recovery rate. Just makes no sense to me. We love the arc. Angie says, Kentuckians ignore signs on doors. Don't wear masks. I love Kentucky. <laughs> I do the same thing, Angie. I do. Like until someone says something to me, I just roll up in there. Um, I, I just got into it with somebody at the eye doctor a couple weeks ago. And I have to admit, you guys, look, I'm the type of person when I get mad, I cry. And I hate that about me. I'm just like, oh. You know, you're trying to be like, you know, tough and you don't want to show that side. But when I get angry, my emotions get the best of me. And um, I went in for an appointment. I had to get a new set of contacts and uh, there was masks everywhere or signs. And I didn't wear a mask, got my exam. The doctor didn't make me wear a mask, was totally fine. I went back three or four days later to get my contacts and the girl at the counter says, oh, do you need a mask? And I was like, no, no, I don't wear masks. And I kept walking and she stops me and she says, no, 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 no. Uh, you don't understand. Masks are required in here. And I said, really, since when? I was like, because I was just here three or four days ago and nobody made me wear a mask, not even the doctor. Well, it's our policy. And I was like, is it really your policy or does it just matter who's behind the counter? Because I was just in here and this wasn't an issue. And you know, it's not going to save you, right? You do know this. Just total confrontation. I was like, are you not going to give me my contacts? Are you telling me you're going to refuse service to me? Do I need to leave? And then my homegirl, Ashley, in the back was like, Miss Watson, <laughs> come, come back here, Miss Watson. And long story short, the doctor ended up letting me go in and get my contacts and examined my eyes with the contacts without a mask. But you know, a lot of times you guys, they just want to see what they can get away with. And if you stand up for yourself, um, most of the time they're not expecting that. Jason, Angela, Kentucky is one of the most amazingly beautiful places I have ever seen. Joe, weren't you in Kentucky? Fort Knox, right? That's where Joe went to boot camp and a school when he was in the army. That was beautiful. I flew to see him for his graduation and uh, just green, very green. Mallory, that's okay. I murder slugs too. Okay, girl, air high five. All right, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I taught Parker. Oh, I shouldn't have. I taught him how to do it because we had some slugs out in the garden here. And you know, little boys, he's like, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I shouldn't have taught him how to do that. <laughs> Applied knowledge. My son is 11. They are trying to make him drink. He's the 11 Bravo. Oh, I'm sorry. 11 Bravo. Infantry, yeah. right? They were trying to make him drink the Kool-Aid. What did you tell your child when they ask, what should I do? He knows what's up. And the best I could tell him was we all have a choice. Mm. That's hard. It's, it's hard. You know, uh, Lexi is now in California. As of right now, a very democratic state with ridiculous mandates, which is why their governor is being recalled. Um, 
And I had that talk with her before she left. And I said, you better not get it. Like, I don't know. It's hard because at the end of the day, they have to make the best choice that they can make. So it's just not fair, you guys, the position that everybody's being put in over this. It's just not fair. Um, and I, I hope that you guys go back and listen to my podcast that I uploaded this morning. Um, I purposely got up earlier than normal with my coffee and got that out right away because um, there is some deception there that's going on with this new approved vaccine. So just listen to that podcast. Look at the links I've provided there on the show notes for the podcast that go straight to the FDA's website. Um, but for Joe, he, the messages came down that it's mandated, but so far, nobody has come to him talking about roll up your sleeve. And um, we're just going to lay low until they try to push that. And right now in the background, we're working on his religious exemption. We've gotten letters from our pastor um, and even our previous pastor before this one. And um, we're just going to do all we can do. Um, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's all we can do. And we'll see what happens. That's why we never give up our guns or our rights in this country. We'll end up like Australia. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They can't even defend themselves over there right now. And here we have an administration that wants to take our guns away from us, but then they want to arm Afghanistan, the Taliban, with, what is it, $80 billion worth of military equipment? So take our, the citizens, the American citizens' guns away. Take our ability to protect ourselves away. But let's arm this terrorist group with all of this equipment. It just, it's, it's mind-blowing. Uh, the hypocrisy and what's going on right now with this administration. Talk to a lawyer about exemptions. They differ from state to state. Yes, Angie. So um, we're going to submit this uh, on Joe's behalf. And he does have the right to appeal if they deny it. And um, if it is denied, then we are going to get an attorney. Um, we're going to fight this. I'm. We're not giving in. And I'm really proud of Joe because as you guys know, He's a quiet guy. He just wants to go to work and do his job and come home. Doesn't really like confrontation. Um, so my heart hurts that he's being confronted with this uh, at work. You know, it's like you go to work half your life, right? You're there every day, all day. So it's making for a very uncomfortable work environment for a lot of people. I have a really good friend that's in the medical department in the military and she doesn't want to get it either. And they're telling her that she's putting her children in danger by not getting it. Like they're just hounding her. And um, that's terrible. It should never be like that. I so respect anybody that wants to get it. I honor that. Like that's your choice. But we should also be respected for our choice. We all have to do our own research. And at the end of the day, do what we feel is best for our bodies. Um, based on my research, I don't feel this is in our best interest at all. Australia is a beta test. If it's happening there, it's headed here. Prayers change things. Oop. Yes. And Canada as well. Canada's going through a lot of tyrannical craziness up there too. So, and that's what I try to tell people all the time, even with the stuff going in the public schools. Oh, that's not happening at my school. My kids are good. Well, Wicked spreads like wildfire, and we have seen that in the last 18 months or so. So it may not be hitting you yet, but all of these things will soon be in your backyard. That's just the way it goes. I think that Matt Staver is offering services through one of his nonprofits. All right, Angie, I will, um, I'm going to go back and write that down because as of right now, I don't have a clue uh, what attorney we would go to for this. So if it comes down to that. Valerie, Governor Nuisance, as we say in California, <laughs> or nonsense. Yes, that is one arrogant man, ain't he? I mean, I've seen him on some stuff and he is so just big headed, arrogant, like definitely not somebody that should ever be in power ever. <laughs> Governor Nonsense. Ay, ay, ay. Our Alaska friends, I've actually never been vaccinated. Yes, a very controversial topic. 
Joe said, you're still alive? My mom was a superstitious Russian woman. Good for her. You know, and, and that's like what Joe just said. People, um, people just are like, they think that you have to have this stuff. And the reality is a lot of times you don't. So, I mean, you're living proof of that. You're as far as I know, I mean, I don't know you that well. You seem like you're probably healthy and you've never been vaccinated. I honestly wish that I knew then what I know now um, and would have done more research because we sure did get a lot of vaccinations when we came into boot camp. Um, and even for my babies, like I was talking about on the podcast, I was 19 when I had Lexi. The nurses come in with a tray of uh, syringes to put into their feet, like on the first day they're born. And I didn't question them. They said they needed it. It was in their best interest. We didn't know. We just did what they told us to do. I don't know what was in them. I don't know how they were formulated. I don't know anything about them. So we live and we learn. And, and that's what I say to the people that have been coming at me like, well, you got shots in boot camp. Why is this different? It is different. I'm not who I used to be. I, I know better now. Angela, Indiana is rock solid. Nobody can legally question or judge a religious exemption here. That is awesome, Angie. It really is because um, it's interesting, the policy, and I've been knee deep in it, you guys, with the uh, military. It's like he has to be counseled by a chaplain or I say interrogated, because that's really what it is. Interviewed. Yeah, interviewed. You're going to have him sit with the chaplain in the, the military branch of which he serves. He's going to be questioned. And this is a man that has never met my husband, doesn't know him, doesn't know his walk with Christ, knows nothing about him. But he's going to interview my husband and give his uh, in, opinion, endorsement, whatever or not, give an endorsement based on his interview with Joe. And then we also have to provide a letter from... Um, I can't remember the exact terminology, basically a religious organization or from our pastor that shows that they share the same beliefs for the reasons that we don't want to get the vaccine. And I'm just like, how can a man, a person determine the legitimacy of my husband's walk with Christ and his Christianity? You know, what is the criteria for that? What is the process? You know, normally, um, you know, if you're going to buy a house, you've got a mortgage broker and you've got a checklist of things that you've got to do before you can close on that property. Like that's the criteria. And if you don't meet the criteria, then you don't close. It's like for this exemption, there's no clear criteria. You guys, they've thrown crazy manuals at us, Navy manuals, Coast Guard manuals. Um, well, look at this template and see what you think. It's like the guidance is not clear at all. So it's making it very difficult for those people that are trying to submit for the exemption and maybe on purpose. I don't know. So Alaska says I don't get sick, LOL, but that's just me. That's good. I mean, you know, maybe that's another good thing about being out in Alaska. We're like away from, from everybody. I don't know. And I say all the time, like the things we do here on the homestead, you know, I eat, we eat a ton of sauerkraut, um, fermented pickles. I mean, the things that we, we do here on the homestead, our homemade bone stock, the things that are in those items that you make homemade, the vitamins, the minerals, the uh, probiotics and things like that. Your gut health is so important, you guys, because your immune system is, it, it depends on your gut health. So I don't know. I really do think that it makes us stronger if you have a healthier diet. I think it might healthy. Gut. I mean, look how healthy Joe is. <laughs> He's so healthy. <laughs> I'm a part of a Facebook group called Stand Up, and it's the nurses. We are going through all of this sharing info. I'm so sad for the nurses. And like you, they're in the medical field. Like I don't, I don't understand. It's awful. Where are you going to find a chaplain who isn't under pressure to keep his job? Right, Angie? <laughs> right? I mean, chaplains are usually officers, right? Um, so they're pretty knee deep in the service in their career. And um, I feel like it's going to be a biased opinion. That's how I feel. And the policy says that every case is supposed to be looked at on an individual basis. 
Right. So what do you do with that when you've got thousands upon thousands of people all of a sudden submitting these religious exemptions because of this ridiculous mandate? Um, it's either going to be a swift approval to just get it out of the way, or it's going to be swift denial, um, or it's just going to clog up the system and who knows what's going to happen with it. I, none of us know right now. It's so uncertain. Um, and that's part of why I can't sleep at night right now. <laughs> Jason's leaving. Jason, and that's Ron, Tina, and Joe. Hope y'all have a great weekend. Thank you, Jason. Same to you. Oh my gosh, we're already at an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Jason. Jason. You reminded me we're about done here. Thanks for um, your super chat, my friend, and for hanging out with us. I hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. Tuesday is walkout day in Oregon for medical fire and all state employees. Good, good. That's what it's going to take. Oh, that's so true. Real food is medicine sometimes. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. And along with prepping up on food and everything else, um, stocking up on medicine and things like that to you guys, because look at what just happened to Candace Owens. Did you guys just see on the headlines what just happened to Candace? She was refused service, medical service, because of her political views. Once they found out who she was. Once they found out who she was, they canceled her appointment. That's terrifying. That's a terrifying thought. If I have a medical emergency or something is wrong with me, if I can't get health care assistance because I am unvaccinated, that's a scary thought. Elena, hi. Welcome. Tuesday. Oh, I read that one. Four out of 10 medical workers in EO County not compliant. Four out of 10. Yeah. What is EO County? Do you know? I don't know what that means. Four out of 10 medical workers are not compliant. I mean, that's going to happen any with any job, right? I mean, you're going to have um, people with different views and different opinions. So I don't know. I I just applaud the, the ones that stand up against the pressure. Eugene, Oregon. Oh, Eugene, Oregon. Okay. Good Chaplain there. Angela D. Chaplain Barry Black. <laughs> what, Valerie? <laughs> Applied knowledge. I've been on the roof building a bird box from the chimney. Yes, I can hear you. I'm glad I was led here to this channel. I'm glad you were too. Thank you for being here. It's so refreshing to be with like-minded people. I'd say you don't even know, but I think you know. 100 plus employees suspended with Peace Medical in Eugene. Ridiculous. And you've got these people that have served in the healthcare industry for years. You've got people like Joe, who's honorably served his country, gone to Iraq, and may have to give up his pension over this. This is wrong on its face. It is so wrong. Or that article about a man who got shot and killed, and they wrote that he supported Trump just so they could make him look bad and let the killer free. Ugh, doesn't surprise me. Oh my gosh. The, the headlines are mind blowing these days. Hi, Terry. Hello. Sorry. I'm late. Love you guys. We love you too. Terry. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Terry reminds me if I get it wrong, but I think he's in Canada. Yep. He is up in Canada. Elena, have y'all checked out Americans frontline doctors? Dot org. It has great info. I've never heard of it. I'll have to look into it for sure. Yep. I'll go back and look at these comments because there's several things I'm going to go back and um, write down from you guys. And that's what this is all about is like this network of sharing information with each other um, to get through this, you guys. That's, that's what it's going to take. So are you guys all ready for the school year with your kiddos? That came fast, didn't it? We, we start next week with little Parker, fourth grade. So I'm looking forward to it. He's not. I think he's at that age where he's like, I hate school. <laughs> Bye, Valerie. Stay strong too, Bye. my friend. Thank you. 
All right, you guys. Well, I guess maybe we should get going. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. I try not to stay on too long because I want to honor your guys' time. Of course, it's Friday night. I mean, we all have so much to do and we do have to go feed the pigs. How are you, Ben? Oh, Joe already fed them. Terry, I lost my dad July 17th, 2019. Oh, Terry, I'm sorry. Buried him July 23rd. My son died July 25th of 2020. And he says, yes, I'm in. Man, I always. Saskatchewan. It, okay, Joe can say it. I would say I always butcher where you live, Terry. Saskatchewan. <laughs> Maybe that's close. Terry, my goodness. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I don't know if um, we were speaking about COVID. So I don't know if if they passed from the virus. Either way, it doesn't matter. That's that is really hard to lose to people that are that close to you in such a close time frame. Angela homeschooling two of ours. Whoop whoop for the homeschool. Terry Canada. Yeah, Terry, you know what? We um how are things looking up there right now? Because we have heard so much and something that I'm very concerned about is when we go to move to Alaska next fall when Joe retires. Um, we can either drive across country and take the ferry from Washington state up to Anchorage, or we can drive straight through Canada and the Yukon and go that way. Um, but I don't know how the border is. I've heard rumors that it's shut down and then other people say it's not, um, you know, with the airlines possibly requiring vaccine passports in order to fly. I'm like, is it going to be the same for the ferry system? I don't know. So I'm like, are we even going to be able to get to Alaska? <laughs> I just don't know. I wish we had a, a homie with a little charter plane that we could pay to take us up there. Glad I found your channel. Best, best of wishes. Hopefully this year goes fast so y'all can get up here. I know. I'm glad that you found us so. too. Yeah, we we're praying. It's like, we're almost there. Please, Lord, please. If it's in your will, let us make it. If you are moving here, they let you through with a negative test. Oh, I don't want to get tested. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm, I'm so, uh, I'm just a rebel, aren't I? I'm like, I'm not taking a shot. I don't want to get tested. I'm healthy and I know I'm healthy. So I, Having something like that stuck half up my brain, I it just, mm, I don't know. I, I know people that have done it though. Um, my my brother had the COVID test and described to me that it was, you know, excruciating. Um, I don't know. I guess that's something we'll have to think about when we get to that point, but I don't know. I'll probably be all right. I'm gonna pick my nose a lot. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Angela, Sarah Palin probably has her own plane, right? Yeah, seriously, Angie, she probably does. It's funny. I watched a sh I watched a uh, conference with her. Um, she's pretty tough cookies. Is she still in office up there? I should check into that. Yeah, it sucks. I just followed a family who had to go through the runner just trying to get here. Oh my goodness! Wow. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we're even going to get there, y'all. Who knows? We're going to be in a year. My goodness. Elena, I'm with you. No test, no shot, just faith in the most high God. Yeah. You know, and I just watched a video the other day of a nurse that was talking about the big, um, I'm gonna call them Q-tips applicators that they use to stick up there to test you. And they're talking about the, um, is it ethylene oxide? I think is what it's called. EO. EO. The swabs on the end of those are saturated in this chemical, which is a known carcinogen, um, so that's kind of scary too. And then you've got these employers that are like, okay, if you don't want to get the V, that's fine, but you're going to get tested twice a week. Who wants to have, I mean, how long is that thing? <laughs> Who wants to have that shoved up their nostril twice a week? You guys, your nose is so sensitive, right? I can't even imagine. Terry, my grandchildren are in BC. My son left three beautiful behind. Oh, he was murdered. Oh my gosh. Uh. Terry, your grandbabies, how old are they? Are they close um, where you can see them and still be a part of their life? 
I'm sorry to hear that, Terry. I'm going to pray for you guys because I'm sure that it's still very raw for you. Well, the tests aren't 100% either. I know you've had these people that test positive and then four hours later, they take another test and it's negative. It's like, what are we really doing here? <laughs> Terry, love you guys. Enough bad news. Love your channel, rather a new channel, but I love it. Thank you, Terry. Yes, I love you too. We appreciate you being here for your support. You've been here quite a while. It's hard not to talk about this stuff, right? It is. Um, like I was saying in the video this morning, it's like, it's just real life. It's, it's really hard. And sometimes I don't know about you guys, but sometimes it's helpful to talk about it. I'm a talker. Obviously you guys know that. So <laughs> there are limits on ethylene oxide residuals. It's a huge target for the long arm of regulatory tyranny. Yeah. I just think again, you know, your body, your choice, I'm healthy. So, um, I'm going to live my life like normal. Um, and I'm not going to be condemned to my home because of my, my convictions. So anyway, all right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Um, got to check on little Parker. It's about time for him to come home. He has his little gizmo watch, um, which I love. So mamas, if you don't want your children to have phones, which I totally agree with you hundred percent, the gizmo watch is awesome. Uh, it's sold by Verizon, at least here in the United States. And um, you program up to 10 phone numbers in it. And those are the only 10 numbers that you, your child can communicate with. You can text them. They can call you. There's no internet that they can scroll on. Anything like that also has GPS tracker. So just throwing that out there. It's been awesome because when he's at the friend's house down the street, I can check his location. I can call him. You know, it just makes me feel a lot better when he's not like right here in front of me. So, all right, you guys, thank you for hanging out with me and Joe tonight. I always enjoy Homestead Hangout. Terry, they're hours away. I've only met two of my grandchildren. Okay, so they're not, they're not that close to you. We have Gab Watch, very similar to Gizmo. Yeah, it's awesome. Just gives me my mama heart peace of mind, right? Thank you. Love your channel. Love your strength. Thank you, Elena. North Carolina Mountain Mama, woo woo, praying for y'all. I didn't know you were here, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Um, stay strong. Pray for the courage of a lion, like we were talking about this morning on the video. I love you guys, and we will talk to you very soon. Thank you.